testing one two ASIC test hey everyone welcome back to the hash Raptor YouTube channel hope you guys are doing great this evening I would like to talk to you about some ASICs that I have been looking at now as you guys know on this channel I have never featured an ASIC I have never made a deal with an ASIC manufacturer and it's not that I'm necessarily against that I'm not against ASIC technology Here's kind of the way I would put this. What I am for, what I am in support of, is the at-home prosumer miner so that we get a distribution of contribution to any security that's being put onto blockchains around the world, no matter what the project is, and that the at-home miner, the folks of you that are watching this channel, like you, like me, we're not put at a competitive disadvantage trying to get hardware. And that's what's happened in a lot in the past with ASICs and it really frustrates me you have to be a big factory where you're gonna buy thousands of these things and then you get early access you get lower discounts you get discounts on them and the at-home miner doesn't get that stuff they end up having to buy it later months later the difficulty levels gone up they're put into a bad position I've owned one Equihash miner back in, let's see, what was that, 2018, something like that. And that's exactly what happened. The very first ASIC that came out on Equihash uh, dominated GPU mining, and everyone scattered to try to find a new home. And that Equihash miner, very quickly, you had to ROI it right away, or you didn't really, <laughs> it was very difficult trying to get your money back on that ASIC. Now, if you had held out for years, a couple years, when Equihash shot back up and your earnings shot back up, you know, then there was more to the story. But it was just difficult. That's my point. It's, it's hard to compete. So that's what I am against. I'm, I'm against at-home miners who purchase ASICs and then have difficulty getting support with them. I have no problem with anybody that owns an ASIC. I think they're cool. I've had them before. I think the technology is really cool. I have an issue with the difficulty that we are presented with trying to participate in the network, trying to be part of what's going on globally. We're put at a competitive disadvantage with this hardware. So that being said, anyone that buys third party or is able to weather the storm, hey, more power to you if you're able to order from the manufacturer and everything goes well with shipping, awesome. That's great. But poor support, poor pricing, uh, difficulty level, you know, shooting through the roof on certain algorithms and, and the at-home miner being sort of taken advantage of, that's the stuff that really irks me. Okay, so I got all that out. Now what I wanted to say is I was uh, doing some shopping on Parallel Miner and I was buying some new power supplies, buying some new breakout boards, and I happened to notice under the shop button this ASIC Miner section. And maybe it's been there. I I didn't ask the, the Parallel Miner guys. Um, and I just kind of stumbled in here. And I was looking at this. So they've got an Antminer S9, so several generations older ASIC here, for $559 uh, on sale, down from $799. And just kind of got me thinking about it a little bit. And the reason was, one, because of the price. Two, because I can get it from a company that I like, like Parallel Miner, that provides good support. Um, it's just easy to order. I'm not, I'm not ordering this and then waiting three months. Uh, so there's some there's some reasons why I also like purchasing from Parallel Miner personally. Now, and this is not sponsored. This is not an ad. I have worked with them in the past. There's nothing like that. It's not nothing sponsored. This is just me stumbling on it here and taking a look at it. So these S9s have been somewhat abandoned, but I'm thinking, and what I want to do is kind of walk you through my thoughts and tell me what I'm missing. What you guys think? Am I crazy? Just just I would love some of your feedback. Um, at $799, too expensive. At $559, it gets a little bit more interesting. So if I go out and I start looking at what the profits would be on this ASIC, so if I put in 16 terahash on SHA-256 at 1,280 watts, now on their website they're saying uh, 1,400 watts, but I have read that people are able to get this down to 1280 watts so I guess a little bit of a gamble there as to exactly what the efficiency would be and for me uh, at peak times I'm usually at about 11 cents something like that but at peak I'm uh, about 12 and if I do a calculate on that you can see right here at Bitcoin SHA-256 I'm at minus 51 cents a day and I just calculated this a little while ago and I was at minus 48 cents so a little fluctuation there let's say plus or minus uh, three to five percent 
uh, depending on when you when you run this. So losing money daily. So immediately it sounds like a bad choice, right? But here's what I want you to help me think through and what I think I'm going to do. So if I come over here to asicminervalue.com and I come out here to the S9 SE, so 16 terahash, and what they do is they have a profitability um, graph here. And you can see down here roughly about the same thing. You can see the, the uh, minus 49 cents per day. And that's in here after Bitcoin has taken a bit of a hit. So right now, uh, the price of Bitcoin is $41,000. We just jumped back up, uh, what, about $5,000 in the past few days, something like that. So we're up 8.9%. So that's uh, a nice little jump. But not the hefty, uh, what was it, $64,000 we had seen. So I got to thinking, well, back, what was the last time we had a good price on Bitcoin that is on this chart right here? And if you come back to November 7th, the profit on this S9, so just a couple months ago, this thing was at $3.49 per day. So that puts you at an ROI, if you multiply that by 100, that puts you at $349, and we've got to get to, what, 549 I think was our price here, 559 So you're looking at under 200 days ROI if the price of Bitcoin rebounds. Now also, granted, the difficulty level is going to rise. So if the price went back to 64000 you know, your, your, your returns are going to be more like somewhere in here, maybe around the $2, $3 mark. But then there's also the opportunity where Bitcoin may jump to the hundred thousand dollar mark so I was chatting with some mining friends of mine and it kind of comes down to this purchase decision comes down to a bet on what's going to happen with Bitcoin what's going to happen with the price of Bitcoin which affects your mining earnings and if if Bitcoin recovers to sixty thousand let's say it jumps to seventy eighty a hundred thousand we go back up two three four five dollars per day and I ROI this in a hundred days then it gets really interesting. Now, one of my friends brought up, uh, and actually someone that's in uh, our Discord, uh, Nevermind, brought up a really good point. Well, maybe you should just buy some Bitcoin right now. Just buy the value of this $559 and just go ahead and buy that in Bitcoin. And you could go ahead and account for the amount of electricity that you're going to have to put into the, uh, the ant miner. Uh, and try to figure that out. So within 100, 200 days, you know, you could you could come out with a number. So within 100 or 200 days, you could come out with a number. And um, but here's what I'm thinking. Um, but here's what I'm thinking. First, just buying Bitcoin. I do own uh, a couple Bitcoin. I do own some Bitcoin because I like to diversify. And two, the reason I'm even looking at this, I prefer GPU mining 100%, but if I could buy this from somebody that can ship right away and provide good support, I don't mind supporting them. And then two, because Ethereum is looking at abandoning GPU miners, I would like to come up with some alternative ways to mine. And this being just sort of a, a small way to do that. So if I wanted to get into Bitcoin mining, you know, this might be a jumping off point here, a baby step, if you will. Uh, I've got to hope that the price of Bitcoin rises in the future. Now, I could mine on this for a year or two years, um, depending on what happens with difficulty. If the price of Bitcoin rebounds, everything this mines could be entirely worth it. This thing could mine several thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. And that's the bet, right? That's the bet. Now, the other thing is just mining is fun. <laughs> so I could buy Bitcoin, but mining is fun. So that's one reason I would like to do this. Two, I'd like to diversify the way that I mine. But three, another issue that uh, Nevermind brought up, one of my friends, was that uh, the heat in the shed. You know, when it gets one of those 9,500 degree days here in the southern United States and I'm fighting heat, I'm going to hate having this thing in there. Just, just one one miner that's bringing in let's say let's just go ahead and say it's bringing in three to five dollars a day for fun uh sort of a best view look uh the heat that it would be adding would be an issue but what i'm thinking is it might be a fun engineering project to look at this asic and maybe attach like a dryer vent put this in a, a um put this in one of my wire shelves and attach a dryer vent on there and inside the shed 
maybe where I have got and inside the shed maybe where I have got some of these exhaust fans I cut a small porthole in the wall uh, maybe somewhere like this right here cut a small porthole maybe off to the side and, and install a dryer vent so that when this thing is building up heat or when it's pulling in air and then building up heat internally inside the ASIC and it's pumped out the back it would be pumped immediately out into the world just exhausted straight out there would be no heat added inside the shed so all of that I'm just kinda of talking myself into this to see how it goes to see <laughs> to see if this would be a fun project uh, an engineering project here to add to the shed and to see if I could ROI this thing uh, being that it's several year old technology um, and then the last you know negative I could think is the amount of noise um, the good news is I do have the shed so I can put it out there but I would need to make sure that I'm not adding any substantial noise outside of the shed that would affect neighbors that I've talked to you about in the past so um, the the echo hash miner that I owned before it was pretty loud it sounded like a jet engine starting up so I might have to add some insulation on the wall of the shed near where this thing sits I don't know something like that but overall let me know what you guys think um, do you think I could ROI this thing do you think I could make money off of it do you think it's a bad decision I would really like uh, some feedback I'd really like some feedback. So let me wrap there. I think I'm going to pull the trigger on this, but I'm going to be watching your comments. You guys let me know what you think. And if you talk me out of it, you talk me out of it. All right, we'll see you in the next video, guys. Take care.